in this session we will talk about the understanding the team processes in the team coaching is there uh, under this session we will have the team processes right that is the what what is the team processes are there types of the team processes team coaching team coaching model uh, heckman and wegman's aims of team coaching coaching roles and as usual the case study research paper book recommendations and references is there uh, uh, in the previous sessions we have talked about that is the role of the leader is uh, uh, as, as a coach is there that is the coaching is to be done right so uh, whenever we are talking about these team processes no the different types of activities and interaction because the word is used is a process so definitely there will be the activities so it is not a single task oriented uh, uh, the pro process right rather than it, it, it is the number of task uh, is there so therefore in that case uh, it is the uh, activities in uh, that will be having uh, between the team and uh, the ultimately the uh, goal is to uh, uh, making sure that is the the team members they are able to interact with each other uh, as much as possible. In other words, uh, team processes are the ways uh, by which the teammates uh, work together to achieve the common objective that uh, I am sure that is until so far you are um, very clear that is this is for this uh, uh, purpose of this uh, team objectives. Okay? So, professor, uh, processes can take uh, multiple forms uh, and uh, interactions among the team members for example, exchanging ideas or the setting goals are there and whenever there will be the interactions uh, among the team members right. So, they will be going for this uh, type of these uh, uh, exchanging ideas is there. And the team members with their surroundings, uh, for instance, uh, materials or information that are necessary to complete a task. So, that is becoming very, very important is there. So, uh, in these team processes, uh, first is about the interactions among the team members is there and then the uh, interaction of the team members is there with their surroundings are there. Uh, if uh, in the both the cases, if they are able to uh, make uh, the proper activities number of activities if the activities are properly designed then definitely in that case uh, they will be able to make this uh, actions uh, proper so team processes actions of a single team members that have direct or indirect implications for the remaining uh, uh, the members are there for example um, uh, uh, seeking to understand the colleagues strengths and uh, improvement opportunities right so therefore in that case uh, uh, how to understand the colleagues uh, strengths are there eh? and uh, uh, improvement opportunities are there so therefore uh, as, as, as the role of the each person in the team is important they understand that is the role of the each team member is very very important. Team processes are not about getting the work done, but rather about the interpersonal leverages the team can capitalize on to get the work done is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it, it is becoming the very, uh, very much necessary that is the interpersonal leverages uh, are to be derived from this particular uh, team processes. And here we can look at the there is the interpersonal context in which the teams carry out their work. Hmm? Uh, for, uh, for instance, the act of coordinating your share of the work with your colleagues is a team process. Whereas, doing the actual work is not a process, it is simply work being carried out. So, uh, a very beautiful example has been given here that is the uh, you share the work with your colleagues. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, it, it is becoming the process is there right uh, because team process is there because the, it, it is not that that is uh, uh, you are doing your job only or he is doing his job only. If uh, the person is doing his job only whether the uh, yourself or your, uh, your team members right then there, there, there is nothing like a uh, process hmm? there is nothing like a team even. Because in the isolation you are doing your own job and if you are doing your own job only then how we can say that that, that is becoming the uh, team processes. So, potential team effectiveness is there, uh, process gains right. So, process losses and the potential team effectiveness is there. So, very graphically very nicely has been uh, explained that is the process gain is uh, getting more from the team uh, that uh, you would expect according to the capabilities of its individual members. Hmm? So, naturally uh, it will depend on the individual members uh, of that particular um, the team 
that is the how the, the, those members are there and process loss is getting less from the team then you would expect based on the capabilities of its individual members. So, uh, when then uh, that is the whatever its uh, capabilities are there and uh, less uh, that uh, uh, the team members possess. Hmm? So, gains minus process losses will be that is the capability of the team which is you are gaining uh, and they are able to do and the process losses means uh, capability of the team members which they are not able to do. So, we, we, we ultimately how much do you gain? and whatever you gain and the potential team effectiveness is there. So, team effectiveness and the process gain uh, they, uh, that will find identify the potential team effectiveness that is uh, how much team will be effective. So, many times it might be possible that is the process gains are the having the minus than the uh, then process, pro less than the uh, process losses and if the process gains are less uh, the capabilities which the team members have and what is required to have. Mm, they are having the less right. So, then definitely in that case it is a process losses. So, if most of them are not having that particular capability, so they will be having the very high process losses is there. So, uh, while the process gains are less because the capabilities are less. So, ultimately it will it will be the potential team effectiveness minus uh, this process gain. So, uh, which which is not there you know, because there are the process losses are there. So, then in, uh, that uh, uh, potential of the that team effectiveness that will be very low. Coordinating loss consumes time and energy that could otherwise be de devoted to the task activity and the production blocking is the occurs when the members have to wait on one another before they can do their part of the team task is there. And so, there uh, here it will be very important uh, that is the whatever the task activity is there hmm, where, uh, that coordination is very becoming very very important. But if the coordination loss is there, hmm, so then definitely uh, between the two team members if they are not able to coordinate with uh, each other what will be there they will not be able to manage the time and there will be the loss of energy. So, therefore, uh, they will not be able to complete the task. Hmm. Similarly, the production blocking is there that is occurs when members have to wait on one another before they can do their part of the team task. Hmm. So, therefore, CPM part critical path method and program evaluation review technique is there. So, the activities which are going to be the parallel if they are not completed the task which is finished, finished earlier that will be which is dependent right. So, then that will be idle and the idle time that will be the losses right. So, that will be the production blocking will be there. Motivational loss is the loss in team productivity that occurs when team members do not work as hard as they could right and therefore, the team members those who are supposed to work uh, on that particular uh, task uh, with the high motivation, but there is no motivation as a result they will take time and uh, their productivity will be affected. So, they, uh, in the case uh, if there is a, uh, a motivational loss is there then there ultimately there will be the uh, team process loss has to be there. So, uh, whenever the coordination loss is there and motivational loss is there ultimately what is that is that is the that is affecting the uh, the overall gain of the team building is there. The list of team processes that can take place in any team is a rather long on goal setting, conflict management, uh, information uh, uh, elaboration, coordination, planning, uh, knowledge sharing and mutual help uh, are just a few examples. So, therefore, in that case uh, whenever we want to get the uh, these uh, uh, the work from the team members right. So, we have to we should be able to handle the goal setting, conflict management, information elaboration, coordination, planning, knowledge sharing and other mutual help uh, um, uh, for the doing the certain jobs. Now, these multiple studies show that the large majority of team processes that fall into one of the three major categories transition, action and interpersonal is there. So, uh, it, it is very important that when we are studying about the team processes right. So, we, we have to understand right what is the transition, what is the action right and the interpersonal uh, effects are there. A, a few facet with each facet encompasses specific processes are there. So, uh, actually each uh, category that will be having the uh, 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 the specific processes you know. So, in the these three major categories will be also having the three processes. 
and the team members they should be able to um, uh, fulfill these uh, categories uh, by performance right. So, there has to be a smooth transition action and interpersonal relationship is there, but many times uh, practically that is not happening and if it is not happening that will be lost to the uh, organization or the loss to the team or the production loss will be there or the team loss will be there. So, uh, you have to be very very careful whenever you are going to be the member of the team uh, you have to also understand how many people are they dependent on me. So, if a uh, uh, few people are dependent on you, you cannot uh, uh, that uh, sacrifice uh, uh, for the time right. So, you have to perform. So, in the time team processes uh, together these broad categories of processes are the foundation of a well oiled and function team. With effective team processes in place a team can achieve more with the same resources. The team is more than the sum of its parts right that we have seen in the definition of the team is there. Ineffective team processes are a disregard for a category of processes lead teams to achieve less with the same resources. You know? So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, the investment is same but achievement is less, the team is less than the sum of its parts. So, therefore, in that case uh, the team will be the less uh, than the whatever its total is there. So, here uh, we talk about uh, for example, the transition is there. So, setting goals, analyzing missions and strategic and uh, planning is there. Whenever we are talking about the action, so in assessing progress uh, and the checking systems are there. No, these are the processes of the effective teams are there and, and, and the coordinating efforts are there, helping uh, teammates are there. And whenever we are talking about the interpersonal, so therefore managing conflict uh, and uh, managing uh, uh, affect uh, and the boosting moti motivation. So, the, the, these will be the, uh, uh, the different processes that is transmission, action and the interpersonal and uh, that, that will be affecting our overall team processes. So, if you want to go for the or, uh, effective overall team processes, we have to focus on these dimensions and in these dimensions uh, ultimately we will be able to give the uh, results are there. So, during transition processes your team prepare for the work ahead and this preparation usually um, entails the looking both forward and backward. It also uh, entails considering both task aspects and the interpersonal aspects and there are the three main facets to this category of processes. Analyzing team's mission and purpose, uh, your team defines and understands its main jobs, uh, identifies the resources available to do the work, speculates about the potential challenges and the uh, roadblocks to the achievement of goals and list source of the support and attrition from the company or uh, and environment is there. So, therefore, ultimately you have to see that is what is the your team and the main job is there and how they are going to analyze this particular job. They, oh, they, their mission and purpose has to be clear. If their mission and purpose is clear that is what the team wants right, then definitely they will be support uh, uh, to you, you and, and the company uh, environment will be positive. Setting goals, your team identifies, specifies and prioritizes goals and sub goals to accomplish its mission and purpose is there and uh, therefore, in that case uh, it, it is always that is the specifying and prioritized goals uh, that has to be in design. The coming up with an overall strategy and plan, your team comes up with an action plan, creates milestones to achieve its task and defines contingency plans in case uh, something goes wrong. So, therefore, we, with, with the overall strategy and plan they have to come out. So, if there is anything which is going wrong then you know, they, they have to surp uh, surpass the anticipated roadblocks is there right. Now, the action process of effective teams so during action process your team seeks to create and maintain the conditions that are necessary to do its job effectively. Thus, relate to the how well your team is working, not to what your team is working on. So, effective teams have four facets of action processes functioning well. The assessing the progress towards goal, your team checks whether its work is progressing according to the plan and whether the strategy will uh, strategy still makes sense, identifies the factors that may put the team off track and makes the necessary adjustments. So, therefore, in that case uh, we have to uh, keep on progressing uh, uh, that is uh, what is the plan is there hmm? and, and uh, there we have to also identify the factors right. When we are able to identify the factors that will be put uh, the team into the uh, proper track right and the necessary adjustments can be made. 
checking how well the systems are functioning, your team ensures it has the necessary resources to work well and to achieve its goal by looking internally, team members, knowledge, time, etc. and uh, extremely company financial support, appropriate inflow of information or materials from the other teams, change, changes in the external regulations are there. So, therefore, all these checklists which have been prepared. So, this, this checklist uh, they are supposed to uh, solve because unless and until they are not able to making the proper checklist, uh, then how they will be functioning. And there might be the barriers, there might be uh, even not barriers, there might be the supporting uh, the uh, processes which will be uh, creating more uh, effective team uh, process. So, the, the, this checklist is very, very important. Unless and until there is no checklist, uh, uh, then it will be very difficult that how the team members knowledge time etcetera uh, and uh, externally company financial support uh, uh, appropriate inflow of information material, how it will work. And if you want to make the smooth functioning of that is the internal sources vis-a-vis -vis these external factors, then therefore definitely there is requirement for this purpose of the support of this uh, uh, the checklist is necessary. Uh, helping in making the teammates of the, the members of your team openly share knowledge with one another and learn from each other. Uh, distribute the workload fairly, but assist those who despite effort get behind their work. Uh, they, they encourage more silent members to share their perspectives and give constructive feedback to each other. So, they, uh, here it is uh, It is not only that checklist you are checking and then identifying whether the person is able to work or not, right. But you have to also see that is the uh, how these uh, the uh, teammates uh, are backing up uh, uh, to help the another team. So, if they are, they, they are sharing, right, they are sharing their perspectives and therefore, each other are with the performance standards are be, uh, below acceptable levels. So, whatever is expected, benchmarking practices, then there will be requirement of certain improvement is required. Coordinating efforts are there. There is no duplication of efforts that everyone understands and commits to their role, that each part of the work is done on time and that the work done on each subtask is in harmony with the other subtask is there. So, therefore, whenever there is any work with the time uh, on the you know, harmony with the other subtasks are there, so that that is to be completed, right. And if, if they are having the proper harmony and the coordination, I am sure that they, in that case uh, that that will be having the, uh, the action process of the effective teams will be res resulted, right. So, uh, it, it is it is necessary, teams are working with the all, uh, all the efforts of coordination. Now, the interpersonal processes of the effective teams are there. Whenever we are talking about the interpersonal processes happen when the members of uh, your team are managing the relationship among them, these processes are more about the personal and human side of teamwork. Right, HR aspect is there. This is about the HR aspect. So, interpersonal processes are the actions that may lead to the high quality relationships, not the quality of teammates' relationship. And uh, as per say, the, there are three main facets to interpersonal processes are there. Anticipating and managing the conflict and other tensions uh, uh, because the every team member is coming with the different uh, individual personality and therefore their their moral values, ethical values, uh, emotion states, uh, their team building approach that will be different. So members of your team work hard to understand and integrate different perspectives and idea. Uh, show flexibility to compromise when necessary and to reinforce a point if beneficial. Come up with the and adjust norms to facilitate interaction, right. So, therefore, in that case, uh, uh, the, these all team members, they should come out uh, with the interactions and cooperations and proactively they identify and work on functional adjustments. Whenever they are having the functional adjustments that can prevent clashes in the teams of values and motivations and personal preferences will be there. Boosting motivation and confidence, members of uh, your team recall and talk about past accomplishments, uh, celebrate small steps towards the big goals, encourage one another even when difficulties seem uh, in, in here uh, that is uh, insurmountable and remember each other of all the steps already achieved when they get stuck or a challenging goal is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, here uh, that confidence and motivation. Mm, that is that that is required a big goals and career or another even when difficulty seem uh, seems to be the insurmountable then definitely all steps needed to be achieved for this particular purpose managing affect and uh, um, emotions are members of your team turn fear of failure into commitment 
and the enthusiasm using enthusiasm words and actions help each other surpassing uh, frustration and dealing with the stressful times and show that they are pursuing sometimes together and they, they, they really care about each other. So therefore, that is the uh, uh, effect that cognitive, cognitive impact on the team members is very much necessary. Whenever you are having the cognitive effect uh, on your team members, then de definitely in that case, uh, it, it, it will be the uh, always the encouraging words and actions will be there. And whenever there will be the uh, encouraging words and actions, uh, uh, definitely uh, there will be affection and emotional binding. And uh, once there is an emotional binding and affection is there, because it is not the manipulated or artificial uh, affection and emotions, rather than it is understanding. It is the understanding between these uh, team members that is the, if I have some problem, so my, my teammate is there who will help me. And therefore, in that case, uh, there is always uh, whenever uh, there is such type of problems, uh, where the teams are not that much affected and em emotional, right. So, then, then definitely they will be uh, having the support to each other which will create the affect and emotions. So, create the affects and emotions is there. Now, we will come to the, the coaching part is there Hackman and Wegman describes the team coaching as a direct interaction with a team intended to help members in the coordinated and task appropriate use of their collective resources in accomplishing the team's work. The David Clutterbuck defines team coaching as the helping the team improve performance and the processes by which the performance is achieved and the through reflection and the dialogue, right. So, therefore, in that case, it is the uh, collective resource in accomplishing the teamwork is there, which we always keep on saying and, and therefore, these Hackman's and uh, Wegman's uh, this definition which we are always using, right. And uh, David's definition that is helping the team improve performance and the processes. So, uh, this we follow and uh, in which performance is achieved uh, through reflection and dialogue is concerned. So, uh, this second definition also is becoming practically very, very useful and we are using this particular definition. The third definition um, given by the Chuck and Sinji is described team coaching as an, an individual and team development process and that uses an integrated combination of interventions to improve collaborative leadership skills and the team performance is there. So, it is always that uh, uh, integrated interventions, interventions to improve collaborative leadership skills are there. So, these interventions for the developing the collaborative leadership skills, uh, 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 as we have talked about the interventions uh, uh, in the beginning also and uh, this type of the interventions uh, uh, which we are, we are using, right. So, then uh, those will be having the collaborative, supporting the collaborative leadership is there. So, uh, we have to be very uh, careful while selecting the interventions. Interventions are required to be the productive. Interventions means me methods, technique, tools, right? Whatever you want to teach or uh, getting the learn by the, uh, 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 the person, right? So, that, that has to be uh, very, very supportive. Team coaching model is there a foundation diagnostic kick off coaching sessions and assessment and sustainability is there. So, foundation establish the foundation for the initiative, strategic objectives, nature of the team, dynamics and timeline is there. So, there uh, here in the foundation, uh, the, it is the uh, what is the objective is there, that objective and goal. Hmm? So, that goal has to be decided right? and uh, you are having the different team members. Now, these team members will be performing. So, here you have to see that is this uh, uh, nature of the team dynamics that is has to be followed. And whenever you are making these discovery interviews with the team along with any diagnostic assessment to be used, 360 degree psychometric use will be there and uh, create a contract with the team including agreed measures of success. So, therefore, you will creating a team. Coaching sessions will be there, frequency of sessions, approach to the sessions usually over 6 to 9 months period and a repeat diagnostic assessment is there, reflect on the sustaining the team to internalize coaching practices is there, right. So, therefore, in that case, uh, the very important point is that is about the whatever the assessment to be used 360 degree. So, 360 degree psychometrics is used, so you are taking the opinions of all and whenever you are considering the all, you will be able to develop uh, uh, that uh, uh, the understanding that what, what type of the coaching is required and what type of the coaching has been used. 
So, create a contract uh, uh, will be there right and uh, assessment and sustainability of this particular type of the coaching that will be very very important. So, on sustaining team to internalize the coaching practice is there and whenever you are having these coaching practices you will be having the proper team uh, on the effectiveness right. So, please always go for this team coaching because the whatever the decisions are taken on the basis of these analysis you have taken certain decisions, but those decisions are to be tested with the period of time and when you are having that, uh, that period of time uh, testing right. So, that through the help of these coaching sessions usually over to 6 to 9 months period which is a very long period and therefore, uh, these team members are required to develop that particular uh, processes. So, in the foundation for the initiative strategic objectives, nature of team dynamics and timeline is there. Uh, diagnostic approaches are often initial one to one confidential meetings with the team members to find out what works well about the team, what does not and why. So, to establish their ideas or approaches that will work and how they could be measured. Going into a team development initiatives of any kind without this having the opportunity to engage with the team is very hard. This diagnostic uh, assessment you see approaches personal and behavior assessments uh, like the insights are good tools for the improving a team's understanding. Hmm. So, in, in the, this uh, I have mentioned in the previous sessions also this uh, uh, diagno diagnose and the analysis of the teams right. So, the, that, that uh, leader is required to be very perfect about this and he has to do this uh, diag uh, diagnosis and the analysis because the whatever the results will come no. So, that results will be based on this diagnosis also right naturally. So, therefore, he has to be very very careful about the diagnosis and the analysis is there and whenever he is having the better understanding right. So, that, that is why their colleagues uh, even if they have done this some diagnosis and analysis, but not into that depth. So, that is how this correct uh, colleagues uh, are the same or different uh, as, as compared to in this context. So, therefore, this reaction to colleagues is uh, uh, very very important. And whenever this reaction to colleagues is as the uh, di uh, diagnostic is there one to one right. So, then definitely uh, uh, it will giving the much realistic uh, results will be there. So, uh, focus on the wider organizational aspects as well as the team challenges there and the create team contract including the metrics and assessment for the program determines the areas of focus and commitment for the sessions are required. Ongoing coaching sessions will be group size 6 to 8 is the ideal size for a team. Uh, this I have mentioned earlier also right. However, the 15 to 20 has been mentioned uh, uh, to be a team members, but at a time uh, that is for the coaching purpose it is a 6 to 8 is required and with a maximum around 11 to 12 and the frequency around once monthly on duration of uh, uh, after around 6 months uh, uh, though can be shorter or longer is there. So, therefore, that will be the ongoing coaching sessions will be there. Uh, decisions on how to run the sessions in terms of the level of formality, actions learning set approaches focus on improving the questioning and reflection of team members. And whenever it is to be proven to be a quick trust builder, but uh, some sessions may be more formal than the others. So, therefore, a coaching tool is used uh, like insights, a Belvin or a team coaching will is there. So, uh, these tools are to be noted uh, uh, carefully. Uh, uh, that is the uh, insights are well been uh, or a team coaching will. So, whenever you are having this uh, team coaching will or the insight of Belvin is there right just so this coaching tool can be used and the assessment and sustainability it is important to review the distance traveled of the team coaching project is there for the whole team and individuals in it and the strongest way to do this is to repeat the baseline assessment. Whether it is a 360 or psychometric it is important to look at ways beyond the team coaching project and that the reflective practices of the team is sustained. Example is a regular reviews using learning set principles ongoing peer coaching is there right. So, therefore, this assessment and sustainability has to be there. Uh, basically, whenever we are talking about the main difference between the team coaching and related forms of the development is there. So, team coaching, one to one coaching, team facilitation and the team building is there. So, team coaching is the emergent within the team 
extended period of the interventions are there, thinking based is there. So, these uh, interventions can be the structure based by changing the organization team is there, right. So, that can be also one intervention is there. And one to one coaching will be the coaching is, is laid, laid, series of the sessions are there. So, there is a one person only. Hmm? Incorporate the cycles of feedback and action spans, business, jobs and personal issues will be there. Team facilitation will be facilitator led, uh, series of the short interventions, uh, conversation based, uh, consultant lead, one specific intervention example one to day event is there and action based is there and therefore, in that case that will be the team building will be there. And now, um, the thinking based is there, um, incorporate cycles of the feedback and the action spans business, job and personal issues are there, one to one coaching, right. And while in the case of the team coaching, it is a focus on building the longer term skills and the capacity is there, right. So, while in the case of this, um, um, uh, uh, the one to one coaching is focus on the current specific problems are there. So, coaches this uh, incorporates the cycle of feedbacks, you no, know, that is the spans businesses are there. So, therefore, business uh, as I mentioned always that is economic recession is concerned or the uh, uh, the uh, other uh, uh, the uh, this uh, uh, we have seen recently we have seen that is any natural uh, uh, problems are there. Uh, then then uh, in that case uh, definitely uh, the, this business spans will be go up and down. So, that then that will be and maybe for the one single organization also. So, then the personal issues will be there. So, focus on the improving the effectiveness is there hmm? and uh, current specific problems are there. In team facilitation it is the uh, always you will find that is uh, we, we have to make this particular uh, type of this uh, support to the organizations. So, that they are able to get uh, uh, the always uh, the better performance is there. So, ultimately team processes that will be giving you the, uh, the results uh, which will be helping you from the purpose of the coaching is concerned. Hackman and Wegmans four M's of the team coaching are the uh, coaching functions. Now, a coach should uh, provide three distinct functions that is the motivational coaching is there, consultative coaching is there and the educational coaching is there. So, such a uh, uh, such as the shared commitment to the group and minimize the process uh, losses such as the social loafing is there. So, coaching by the team leader can motivate members to devote themselves to the teamwork and the share workload is there. So, here it, it is always important that is whenever you are giving this type of the coaching you are having the motivational processes is there. In the consultative coaching is concerned uh, strategy and fosters the intervention of the new ways of proceeding with the work that is aligned with the task requirements. Uh, Denison et al 1996 found that successful leaders uh, facilitate flexible problem solving and the team development is there. So, therefore, in that case it will be consultative will be there that will be flexible and the problem solving is there. In the educational coaching fosters the development and appropriate use of the team members knowledge and skills. So, team leaders uh, coaching uh, increases team psychological safety which in turn increases learning behaviors and improves the members skills and knowledge. Second is the timing of coaching, it is very very important. That is a specific element of the team coaching are most effective when carried out at the specific intervals of uh, uh, team's life cycle. They propose that motivational coaching is more helpful at the beginning of a performance period. Hmm. So, there uh, here it is the uh, because what is happening is that is the uh, in the beginning if the person is highly motivated then he will be having the high level of learning. So, consultative coaching at the midpoint of the performance period and educational coaching uh, when the performance activities have been completed. The team's task are the for coaching to have positive effect on the team performance. Uh, it needs to focus on the most salient team performance processes for a given task is there. And uh, as a result of which we will find that is that this team task uh, for example, uh, were assigned with the moving materials. Then the only process that is required is the level of effort that team members expend. Focusing coaching on other processes that are not needed or are constant would be in, uh, ineffectual and may even decrease from performance as it would redirect employees uh, time away from the most important processes right, which is required to do the job successfully. Uh, this team design is very, very crucial part because it should be very well structured and supported in order of competent coaching. If the team design is not properly uh, uh, structured, then definitely that will not be effective. So, we focus on three functional areas uh, to be most beneficial and poor coaching interventions aimed at poorly structured and supported teams that is to be avoided and will be more than the beneficial for the team performance is there. So, for, uh, uh, 
uh, Rish distilled the five fundamental coaching roles uh, that is the consultant, supervisor, instructor and the uh, facilitator is there and the mentor is there. So, problem focus intervention due to urgent product or processes related needs, supervisor intervention due to high authority of coach, uh, instructor problem focus guidance to impact knowledge and expertise, facilitator independent relation that focuses on the offer of specialized services by the coach and the mentor is there, voluntarily sometimes emotionally related interaction that focuses on the mental support, environmental protection and the non-expert task related help is there. The clutter back in 2009 proposed that team coaching could be used to improve some specific aspects or aspects of the team performance, right? And the coach makes sure the team are asking the right questions at the right time. In order to achieve these shifting requirements, it also helps improve the leader's ability to manage the performance of individuals, make things happen faster, can help a team move rapidly. Uh, through the stages of development, right? That may be hindered without a coach due to mistrust, poor communication, and avoidance, right? And therefore, it is important, but less obvious questions is there. So, make things happen differently. Uh, where the culture change is uh, accompanied by the individual and, and the team coaching, the pace and depth of the change will really uh, it will be going to be there rapidly increased by the supporting people. And, and they will come to the term with the new attitudes and the behaviors are there. So, on basis of this we can understand it is the how the coaching and the timely coaching and the interventions in the coaching are very very important. Uh, as usual this is the case study uh, which, is we, uh, will, which will be helping you to understand impact of these team coaching. And if you were hired as a team coach uh, what measures and strategies you adopted to raise the confidence of the team members. Right. So, it is a very interesting question um, this is the research paper um, team coaching and innovation in work teams is there motivational and behavior intervention mechanism. So, here we will find that is the how um, you will be having uh, the, the study right that is uh, helping us to develop the uh, uh, teamwork in the organization right and uh, how different interventions have been implemented. Finally, this is the book that is the practitioner's handbook of the team coaching is there and from here you will get the tips that is uh, how this team coaching is uh, uh, helping you right and, and uh, to for the team coaches of all levels from the novice to the seasoned practitioners uh, this book is helping and uh, more prominent place in institutional and organizational context right this book will be helpful and uh, you can go with this particular references that is these are the references uh, um, from where this uh, uh, the material is uh, uh, referred or uh, you can go this with uh, uh, these references in detail. So, that uh, you can have the in depth uh, uh, the study for the purpose of the for coaching in the team building is there. Thank you.